I caught myself an interception too, Taylor. For a tub? For a tub. Yeah. Because to be honest, a lot of people have the stereotype that football players are dumb. Right? That's the stereotype. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on everybody? Welcome to a very, very, very special NFL episode of Fung Bros Food. Today we are in San Gabriel, California. We are at Chang'an Restaurant and we are joined by NFL safety, Taylor Rapp. Woo! What up, brother? What's up, y'all? How you doing? Yo. Thanks for having me. All right, so this episode is really, really special because we're going to be eating a diverse spread of Chinese food. And you, for those who don't know, you're half Chinese. Yes, sir. There's so many things to talk about about you being raised half Chinese and, and your Chinese side is really traditional, yeah. but you're a rookie in the NFL now, so that's crazy. I had to open up with the Shanghai section because that is the part of China that your heritage is from, right? Yep. My mom was born in uh, Shanghai, uh, born and raised there. My dad was actually born in Oklahoma, but he was actually raised in Toronto. Okay. So uh, he's, he's Canadian as well. My uh, mom was actually my dad's translator when my dad was over there working. Oh, that's, okay. our, that's actually how they met. Does any of this food look familiar to you right now? Yeah, all of it, really. Pork belly looks bomb. I'm, I'm ready to taste that. Hong Shao Ro. What's the word on nutrition? Are they? Are you like LeBron where you're like just steamed chicken fish or is there a little <laughs> bit more leeway? It's kind of all up to the players. Obviously, you try to eat as clean as possible. Personally, me, like I, I kind of on that LeBron, eating clean, eating like a lot of whole foods, chicken, fish, and a lot of veggies. All right, well, um, we got to break the diet for yeah, right now. For yeah, the holidays. For, for, for the holidays. <laughs> Oh yeah, pork belly. Some people know this, me and Andrew are from Seattle, and you, we actually went to the same college. Yeah. You're, you're from, essentially, Washington, yeah. Seattle area, right, right? Right, right, You're from Bellingham, which is up there, yeah. right next to Vancouver. Right. Obviously, we used to cross Bellingham when we would go to Vancouver yeah. growing up, because we're from Kent. How traditional was your upbringing growing up? I mean, I'm I think curious. it was, it was kind of mixed, mixed uh, of both. My mom, she's definitely more Americanized, but my grandparents, they're the ones that obviously always traditional. Right, right. I love this pork. Yo, you going in, man. Just eat, just eat, eat out of the cup. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, next dish. That is called Tai Tiao Yu. Tai Tiao Yu. Oh. Getting it. <laughs> I know that that is Shanghainese seaweed fish. Yeah. Seaweed fried fish. It's kind of like a light seaweed batter and it's a uh, fried fish fillet. Pretty cool. Yeah. And then you dip it in the white pepper. Uh, Chinese fancy fish sticks. You dip it in this. Uh, what is the sauce? Oh, it's powder? It's just, uh, salt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> white pepper. Somebody was called. <laughs> white pepper. All right, let's get into this. It's pretty good. Man, it's good though. But every, uh, every Chinese New Year's or like your birthday, my, my grandma always cook up a million different dishes. Is it your birthday that you have to eat the long noodle? It's your birthday, birthday, right? Your birthday. Yeah. You know what's wild is that like, you're half Chinese, but in a way, since you grew up with your grandparents, you grew up with even some of those traditions that like we didn't do in our family. Oh really? No, because we did it. Just every, my parents didn't do it. Yeah, every birthday, uh, my my grandma would cook up these long noodles. Grandparents, they they're yeah, like the grandparents the they know best. I like the light seaweed flavor that it's got to it. You know, you don't really taste them in dishes like this. So did you go to Shanghai? I was uh, when I was like six or seven years old. Mm. So. I mean, it's, it must be completely changed, completely different. Nowadays, I think if you went back, man, couldn't even recognize it. Yeah, it would be, it would be crazy. Long Jing Xiao Ren. And you use chopsticks correctly. I know. I use it unconventionally. Let me see the form. Okay. Mine is just kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's raw, it's not cross sticks. Like some people, they be doing this. Yeah. But I think yours actually looks right, but it's just a little off. My, my mom and my grandparents always, they, they try to teach me, but like, I, I just always, as a little kid, I picked up chopsticks like this, and I always used to, whatever works, works yeah. whatever works. Whatever works. Also, you you only half Chinese, so you don't gotta be. Right. That <laughs> Did you feel pressure to be Chinese growing up? I was almost ashamed of like my heritage and like who I was. I looked different. Kids like would make fun of me, or like, like they would make eye jokes. jokes. No? Yeah. <laughs> Growing up, I was like more ashamed or embarrassed, and that's, I think that's one of the reasons why like I'm really trying to take on that role now and try to embrace it. It's weird, like I would, I would be home, be all the traditional Chinese stuff, and then like I'd go out in the real world, and I'm almost like put on this mask mm -hmm. and like try to get away from it. And I think that's like I use that as fuel, like fuel the fire, and like I use that to push myself and in sports, really, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's that's what really drove me. Well, it's funny because at Bellingham, 
you're probably one of the more Asian kids. Exactly. But if you grew up in like Seattle, mm -hmm. you would be like it's the Hapa different. kid. You'd right. be the half kid. Yeah, we get the lamb chops okay. over for yeah. this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's my dish right there. <laughs> All right, I got the Kao Yang Pai. Kao Yang Pai. That breaks down a grilled lamb steak. This is the Shao Kao section. Shao Kao basically is like Chinese barbecue. This is our Texas barbecue. These chuar, it's called chuar. Okay. The, the young people eat it in Shanghai, but I would like your grandparents for sure probably didn't no. eat this. Before. So I yeah. would say obviously lamb chops is in itself is not only Chinese, but definitely the seasoning. But these is more seasonings Chinese. actually come from like Western China. Mm, really good. It's different. Very fragrant, got like that kind of seed flavor. These more seasonings Chinese. actually come from like Western China. Spices taste more Middle Eastern. What do you call your grandparents? Wagong Wapu. I think that's Shanghainese. Wagong. Wagong Wapu. There's, I could tell there's a, a Shanghainese. Yeah, I think it might be. So I've heard like, people compare Shanghainese to like French. Yeah. Because it's like. Zha Zha. Zha Zha No. In Shanghainese, like, you know that phrase, Ni Chirlema. It'll be like, Non Tsevelava. Oh, I, yeah, I see yeah, yeah. that French to it. No, let's you, try the beef cool. I know oh, yeah. you don't eat, you're not digging on the shellfish too much, but what about <laughs> we eat strange cuts of beef? Of course, man. Okay. Well, hey, I'll tell you this, you don't become the safety for the Rams <laughs> <laughs> eating shellfish. Did your dad play football? In high school, yeah. Did he push you into it, or was it literally like, it just no, happened? It's, it's kind of my, my brother and I's dreams. They spent countless money, baseball tournaments, traveling, all that stuff, football, all that gear and stuff, but they're just really supporting us. So what did your traditional Chinese mom say when you wanted to play football? <laughs> I mean, I don't think she knew what football was. was like, I think oh, you want to play football? You want when she watches <laughs> games. But she didn't stop it. Obviously. She didn't stop it. Oh, no. Okay. No, no, no. Well, shout out, shout out to, to yeah, moms. Yeah, shout out to yeah, mom. Yeah. Yeah. But she oh, still like make sure you get good grades though, because you did. Oh, we went course, to the same school. You went to UW. Of you went to UW. You got decent grades. I know. It was. We, we had to get A's, or like we weren't playing football. You have an older brother, right? Yeah. How was his journey with being Asian as well? Because you know, you said he entered sort of like, I guess like an Asian profession. I never really had that conversation with him, but like throughout high school or like growing up, I think he had a similar experience. Like it would be interesting to like ask him and talk to him about like how he is like in, in his engineering world and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out Austin, man. Yeah. What up? I always said though, that sometimes for Asian parents, man, best you can ask for is them to not stop you from doing as long as they don't stop you and they still love you, right? That's all you can ask. For. <laughs> that's all you can ask hey, for. And not stopping you is love. Yeah. And it was big for me to have my grandparents come to a lot of the home games too. Do they understand what's going on, or they're just no. like, they had no they're idea. Like, they're like, they're dancing idiot. A wool new. We got the wagon right here, man. Go for it. But what point did you feel comfortable repping Chinese culture more? And when I ended up going to UW, I think it broadened my uh, horizon. Obviously, it comes as you mature, obviously. And, you start to, you know, think about, you know, where you come from, and as I, as soon as I got to UW, I started to embrace my heritage and culture a lot more. Mm. Did you ever think it was weird? Like, I guess, what do you think about like the racial issues? Because like, obviously, you got kind of jokes or any, anywhere from light-hearted jokes to maybe real discrimination when you were playing football, right? Yeah. I think a big stereotype for for Asians is that like we're soft and we can't be aggressive, yeah. so. I mean, it's pretty cool for me, you know, playing football and being how aggressive and tough that the sport is, me being Asian, so it's it's pretty cool. It's, I think it just came with, you know, me loving the game and me understanding that you have to play the game with that mindset and that mentality. And I, I don't like to get hit. I don't I don't like to... Uh, to feel that jolt, right? No, but I mean, it's just something that comes with the game, something that you have to do. Prior to the, doing this video, I was like researching on Reddit, why don't aren't there Asians in the NFL or, or playing football? Even anecdotally, I guess like at a high school level, there's barely any Asians, yeah. right? One was like, yeah, because like the parents just want to protect the brain. Yeah. And in the NFL, <laughs> you have to hit the brain, but the brain <laughs> is the money maker. I would go to college camps and stuff like that, and. Just because I didn't look like a typical football player, what what is out in like the real world right now in the NFL, yeah. like what looks like a typical football player, I think I was, you know, just not given the chances or like as many looks from right. college coaches. Right. Which I don't really blame the college coaches just because like they never seen it, right? Yeah, they're just, just doing their jobs. So new, they're just like I don't know. You know, I kind of relate to that when I was a freshman in high school, mm -hmm. and they would just like never throw it to me, but in practice I could do it. But then there was just some sense of like, oh, he's gonna, he's not gonna, gonna do it in the game. Yeah. He's not, he, what positions do you think Asians typically would be the best at? You have Young Ho Chu. Oh, you said yeah. quarterback? Oh. Quarterback. You don't gotta get hit. You gotta be really smart. You gotta be able to analyze okay. things. Definitely be like a skill position. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think it would be like Ed Wong, which 
I think he's like a definitely outlier because he played oh, offensive line, line right? right. Dak Win was a linebacker. Dak yeah. Win was a linebacker, yeah. pro bowler, Vietnamese on the Cowboys, yeah. shout out to him. I did play uh, cornerback though for a year. Oh yeah? I caught myself an interception too, Taylor. Except I ran mine for 80 yards. Oh really? Yeah. For a tub? For a tub. Yeah. Yo, this is real authentic. Do you eat it like this? Yeah, okay, this gotcha. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Looks like it's the spices for the for the lamb. Yeah. Have you found a pretty big Asian fan base that's supporting you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I get messages all the time from you know kids who are Asian playing sports and saying like, oh, how they look up to me and how I'm, I'm an inspiration and stuff like that. When you were breaking these barriers in people's minds. Did you feel that way, or was it once you got there and arrived, you more were able to look back at it? So I was really like doing something that people almost thought they they couldn't see or wouldn't yeah. see. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's more the latter. Like as soon as I got to the NFL, you know, I, I would like look back on it and was like realize you know how big it is. And, and maybe it shouldn't be this way because maybe we should just relate to everybody's story, even if they don't look like us. But it just there is something innately about human nature where until you see somebody who looks like you or has a story like, uh, you know, family background that's like kind of relatable to your own, you're like, I don't know if I could do it. Yeah, exactly. I didn't have yeah. And that's why I kind of took on this role of trying to be this like role model or like figure for kids who are like in my position right, right. when they were when they're growing up, like who I didn't have growing up to look up to someone like you said. If you had to point to an athlete that was the biggest inspiration for your identity thing, I would say Jeremy Lin. Right. Because, you know, obviously during that Lin Sanity era, right, right. those couple months, like he was, he's probably the biggest, biggest deal in, in pro basketball and all sports. So. Yeah, sure. And you were probably in high school at that time. Yeah. And, so, that's, and that's when I really was like trying to go on to the next level. Play. Right. Do you think that actually helped push you? I think so. For sure. I, I kind of use Man, that. Awesome. You don't have anyone to look up to. Like when you're thinking about the future and you're like, oh, can I like really make this happen? Like huh. there's no one out there. But like for me to be able to see Jeremy do that on like a, a national stage, obviously in pro sports and stuff like that, you know, that kind of gave me a little, a little, a little hope. That right. little hope, to try to go after it and attack it. All right, so what do, what do you think of this, man? We got a, a gigantic short rib sitting oh, on a man. bed of lettuce. This I is not. Even, have you seen even. Chinese food look like this? Before? No. I'm yeah. just gonna dive right in. I think that's the same braise as like Hong Xiao Ro, maybe. Like similar. Is it more the self-limiting belief of what Asians can do, or is it there are systems that just doubt us, and once you get a few bad breaks, you just get to give up? It, it goes back to like what we were talking about, how like you know a lot of Asians play the odds. And, not do the easy route, but like do the statistical route where it's like, you know, if I if I put my heart into uh, sports and then like I don't make it, like what do I have to fall back on? So it's, I think a lot of them play the odds. Go into something that is like a sure thing, like engineering or like go to medical school. Or I, if you have to give some advice, like I mean, at some point, do you think that there's a time that a player just got to hang it up and be like, you know what, listen, I'm not made for the next level? Yeah. I heard that you were the top athlete at your school or on your entire football team, right? Yeah. So that's a good chance. But how do you know like that you had a really good shot and that it was going to be worth it? You Even don't education know. to us? No, no. I mean, that's the hard part we're talking about. I'm that's like, the answer I Asians don't want to hear. Right, because even when, <laughs> I know. When all, I didn't think when I was in high school, I didn't think I was going to play at the next level in college. And then even when I was in college, I didn't think I was going to make it to the NFL. The one advice that I would give is like, if you have a dream and you really want it, like, you got to put everything, all your effort, all your dedication into it and go after it. In, in college, you know, just. Uh, doing the right thing and always hanging around the right people. I did everything in my control to put myself in the best position to make it to the next level. So that was like maybe everybody's going out on Thursday or whatever and it's you being like, you know what, I'm cool, I'm just rest. Yeah, Look over rest, I'll, I'll watch some extra film or stuff like that. Like my college coach, he called like the slight edge. Like you always try to get the slight edge on your opponent. This is Ma Po Lung Shao. Ma Dude, you actually uh, understand a lot of Mandarin. Yeah. 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 You, like, you understand I mean, it pretty well. Chang Yong Sala. The Chang Yong Salad. Have you ever had uh, chrysanthemum leaves? No. Man, go for it, man. You gotta, you gotta try this. I, in my personal opinion, I, I take this over kale. I take it over arugula. So it's, a, it's like almost like a tea leaf salad. Ooh. Mapo is spicy. <laughs> I don't know. People don't understand how many set plays there are and how much practice. No, what? I don't think fans just watching football like they have no yeah. idea of what's going on behind the scenes. Because to be honest, a lot of people have the stereotype that football players are dumb. Right, that's the stereotype. Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> you you don't know, the first time they interviewed them. That didn't even make you see it. <laughs> no, but you know, there's like, uh, so much more going on behind the scenes. But also there's like memorization of plays right. and coverages and, and calls, especially defense. You have to be able to adjust on your calls based on what the offense is doing. Yeah. Do you think defensive players, are they traditionally, they don't get their shine on as much? <laughs> because most people only know quarterback, running back, wide receiver, yeah. and then maybe linebacker, people you know, who with score the touchdowns. Yeah. People who score touchdowns. Yeah, defense players, I don't think, get as much spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. They don't get any love. They do all the dirty work. Word, word. All right, we got to get into these desserts. Are you familiar with this? No, I'm not. What is this? This is called a tang hulu. You had growing up this little snack called Hall Flakes, the little round red things that come in like the paper the berry cylinder that you would eat their sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The, yeah. yeah, those are called Hall Flakes. That is the fruit that makes the little flakes, the really? little discs. Oh, really? Yeah. Press this into those uh, discs. Okay. Like from like, honey on the outside or what is it? Yeah, it's, it's a uh, candy. molasses. It's candy oh, molasses. Okay. So they'll dip it and then let it cool. Tong Hulu. Xing Yan Kwai Lu. From us to you. Wait, man, they're gonna have you do a New Year's uh, commercial. I don't know if they had you do it yet. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah, yeah this is a good one. It tastes like jam? Yeah, yeah, it tastes yeah, like jam, bit. right? What is it's the a fruit? hawthorn berry. It, it brings back memories, like yeah, seriously. Yeah. What are some other plans you have, like representing the culture? I mean, I know that you have your hat. <laughs> no, your yeah, hat. I, I, didn't, I didn't bring my hat, but. You, you have your hat and your logo. Yeah. That's a mixture between your Chinese name. Yeah, what yeah. is your Chinese last name? My full Chinese name, Chiyo Jin. Yo is, uh, is the name that my grandparents gave me, but they really just gave it to me because it's it looks like my initial TR. Okay. Grandparents always used to call me Jin Jin, which okay. is like handsome horse. <laughs> oh, okay. They, they, I don't know why they called me that, but they called me Jinjin growing up. So yeah, we, we put together that uh, the logo with the with the yo. So what you got the merch going on right now? Is that yeah. is that that's just the hats or the shirts or what is it? Is like yeah, so we just have the hats. I, I did this deal with uh, New Era and we got to design my own Rams, design hats, and then we also have uh, my own custom just brand. Bro, you're going to China. What, yeah. what, are you, what are you guys expecting on that trip? Where are you guys going to China? First heading to Beijing and then we're going to take a train, the bullet train up to Shanghai. We're going to host a, a couple of Play 60 and uh, football camps. In, in each city, you know, go there with my family. My mom showed me around, so it should be a good time. Think your China. Chinese is gonna get better out there? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, it needs Don't probably to. Before I ask you to say some stuff. No, I know it, it, it yeah. needs yeah. to. Uh, it, I don't even know how to say football in China. We just figured out how to say it. 美式足球, American, American style football. Ni hao, wusu Taylor Rap, chiu yo jen, wusu mei shi, ju chu ren. Very My grandma used to make this all Hell the yeah. time. Bro, you got goji berries. I think you have some egg white in here. You got probably some black sesame inside. Let's see what's inside. Oh, it's got a little wine in there. Mmm. Tong ren, hao chu. We just did a Chinese commercial, bro. Take them, get chopped that up, send that to Shanghai. We gotta go through real quick potential sponsors, Chinese sponsors, Dave. We mm. did this with Jeremy Lin. Hey, you guys gotta help me out. You know, because your sport is so athletic based, Definitely, we got to look at vitamin brands and energy okay. drinks. Like, yeah. all right. What about yes, yeah, clothing, clothing lines? Clothing lines. The big ones you have are like Xtep. That's what Jeremy's with now. Okay. Uh, you have Leaning. You have Peak. You have Anta. Anta, uh, yeah. I've heard Anta, of Anta, you heard yeah. Anta. Leaning is the biggest one, actually. Okay. If you can get Leaning. That would be dope. Yeah. Would you endorse one piece of workout equipment? Because one thing about China is they don't really <laughs> like holistic gyms. They have this like um, rubber like. Pole right with two balls <laughs> on the end, and they just shake the pole up and down. You really? know the resistance training. Yeah, yeah. kind of like a shake weight, except with a shake uh, the shake in the way. <laughs> make your my, own, your own training shoe. Yeah. Oh yeah, or my own training. Yeah, because cleat. Yeah. I don't know. Technology. No, not right. cleat. But yeah, training shoe would be perfect. Thanks for doing this video, man. I'm super excited for your future. You're my favorite player yeah. in the NFL. Man, man I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate that. <laughs> I guess, what do you want to say, I mean, to, to all the kids watching, this probably is their first exposure to you. Yeah, if I had one thing to say, if you have a dream of playing uh, professional sports, whether it be football or stuff like that, it doesn't even have to be sports, you know, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a president. If you really want to do it, you know, you, you go after it and you put everything into it, you put your full dedication, you put your whole everything into it, you know, you put yourself in the best position to get there. If you have a dream, go after it. And, uh, my college coach always said, make sure your house is in order, making sure like, all this stuff off the field, like like all, your relationships, your relationships, your family, all, all your yeah. family, like that. That's that stuff is in good, yep. in good shape. 
Yo, what was your favorite thing? Last thing. I say the pork belly and the, the wagyu okay. was my top. Actually, low key, the shrimp early in the first round. Yeah. The Shanghainese shrimp. And I actually really am into this salad. Low key, I was eating this and we never really got to it. Oh, really? Eggplant shrimp dish is yeah, fire. Is the reason why we wanted to bring you to Chang'an is because it was just like authentic modern Chinese food, you know? Right. All right, you guys, to end off the video, I guess it's just fitting to wish you guys a very happy Chinese Lunar New Year. Shu Nian Kuai Le. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Big shout out to Taylor Rapp here. You guys follow him and his story down below, man. Uh, wrapping up your rookie season. Yeah, exactly. Here. Yeah. I'm sure it's been a crazy ride. Um, and, man, we just wishing you the best for the future, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate thank you man. guys for having me. All right, and yeah. follow, he's going to be going to China soon. So definitely follow yeah. him on social media there. T Rap07 on Instagram. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that video. In the comment section below, I need you to do three things. Number one, let me know what is one life goal that you have that seems improbable or unlikely to other people. Number two, make sure you let us know what is your plan to achieve that goal. And number three, make sure you leave your Instagram tag. We will be giving the best answer a $25 Amazon gift card. Huge shout out to you, bro. Yeah, hey, thanks for having Keep me, guys. Keep at it. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the video. And until next time, we out. Peace. You know, we're wearing a helmet and we got all our pads on, so it's like, it's not like basketball where like you can see their face, you can relate to them. Football's hard for fans to relate to just because they're, I mean, you're wearing a helmet, you, you, you can't really see their face. Right, right. Other than like quarterbacks and exactly. you, all the offensive yeah. stars, yeah.